your tomatoes mad? Have you crossed your tomatoes? Stick around and find out how we cross our tomatoes. Yeah! Vegetate presents. Welcome to my garden. West with Vegetate, and today we're going to teach you how to cross a tomato. Yeah, that's right. I'm telling you how to cross breed your tomatoes. Yes, we're we're going to basically take one variety of a plant, a tomato plant, and cross it with another tomato plant. You can do this with peppers and cucumbers. Uh, now we're no experts on this. We do have one successful cross breed, but on the last video that we had, we had several uh, questions on how to do it. Now I learned my method from gardening with Norway. And I will post a link to the video that, I, that uh, taught me how to do this. And I recommend you checking out his channel. Uh, again, we are no experts by this, but we're going to show you the principle behind crossing your tomatoes. So stick around, and we'll pull you in right here. Wait, what's, wait, wait, come on, come on. Awesome, like these two right here. This one would probably work. This one probably a little bit better. But you want to find a blossom that yet has not opened up completely, where it's flowered all the way, where the sacks have dried out. Uh, and I'll show another one here in a minute what I want. Don't bump the camera. So you take your pair of tweezers and you're going to slowly pull off these what would normally be the Wait. flower sacks. So you gotta be really careful with it. So there's something very fragile inside. Yep, and what you want to do is be able to exp remove these pollen sacks so they don't come to maturity and fertilize the tomato plant because you want to put your pollen on there the one you want and the, this is what we have here is a brandy wine a brandy wine variety and so I'm gonna pull all this off now I've seen some people can be able to pull all these off in one go but we're not that fancy here at Red to take we'll do what we can be very careful not to break this deal. When you get done, you should have something like this. You should have no pollen sacs, flowers left. I even sometimes remove a little bit of these deals here. And then another reason why you want to do that is because it keeps the bees from flying into it and fertilizing it as well with their pollen. Because they're going to come around looking for flowers. Well, if there's no yellow left on it or green, they're going to not know that's a flower and they're not going to touch that. So I'm hoping you can see that, but that's what it should look like. All right. Now we're going to grab some pollen. Good. So what we usually do is use something with black. You can use anything. It'll basically, you want it to be able to be black. And Aiden's going to demonstrate here how to. We use a uh, mechanical toothbrush. You want to find a flower that is getting ready to produce some pollen, and you're going to just use an electric toothbrush and knock it loose. And hopefully you get some. Uh, I don't see anything. That one's a dud. You may have to try several different varieties, but this is basically what you do. And if you find the right blossom, you may have to try multiple blossoms of the same breed that you want to do. And you should look something like this. This is perfect pollen for cross-pollination. And that's why you use something black because you can see it. Stigma, and you place it in the pollen. And there you go. It's now been officially fertilized. And this was a... is a... Um, Brandywine Studith variety, and we crossed it with a black creme. Here's what we do to identify our our uh, tomato plants. We usually put a, a little marker of some kind of little green wire like this, just to, to identify the plant. So when it comes up, so on there very loosely, it doesn't hurt the plant. And we'll later know that this is a cross. And we only do one or two, maybe three crosses a year so far. We're learning again, as I as said earlier. Uh, and I usually use our videos, or I just uh, know what each thing is. But it's probably best to write them down and use some kind of a, a sticker so you'll know what that plant is. Also, we decided to call this a, it's a mix between, this is a mix between a Brandywine Studith variety and Black Creme. So me and Aiden come up with the name, the Black Wine. However, that name is, sounds pretty good, but we want to see if you guys can come up with something better. So if you guys will name, give us a name of what you think it should be called and we'll pick a winner and that winner will get the seeds from this plant so you can start your F1 variety of your own breed at your house. So leave a comment in the comment section below of what you think we should call it and we'll pick a winner and we'll send you some seeds from that fruit if it makes it to volition. We cross our fingers and we hope that it makes it to uh, to maturity and we'll get some seeds for you guys. So this is our Lufa Goofa this year. 
and as you can see pretty nice as well great size I just want to show you guys that we're still producing some loofahs this is also for El Gato uh, you know who you are uh, you've been showing me some videos of yours here's some of mine so El Gato uh, appreciate you guys for uh, keeping me up to date on, on the loofah goofah seeds uh, again uh, we're not experts when it comes to cross breeding uh, we want you to know that up front we're experimenting and we love the idea of cross breeding our own tomatoes coming with their own varieties and one day one of these days sunny girl or or black wine will be in spread all over the world and be in everybody's yard mm -hmm. so that's our whole ultimate goal in life is to have you know somebody says "Ooh, I got these brandy wines or Ooh, I got these big boys or better boys well guess what one of these days we're hoping that one of our varieties will be in your yard and in your garden and then you'll love it and you'll spread that seed onto your kids and their next generation that's what this is all about is the next generation so again as always it goes thanks